life. <laughs> um, so what does it feel like to be here on the red carpet for this premiere tonight? Oh, um, it's great, actually. It's great. I'm glad it's finally out because um, we actually finished it last February. Um, so it's been a while and um, I think everyone's been chomping at the bit for it to be released and to pe people to watch it and hopefully talk about it in the right way. It um, throws up lots of really interesting, important issues that we hope will lead to dialogue between people and uh, yeah, so I'm glad, I'm glad to be here. And if you could tell us a bit about the appeal for you of being on board with the project, but specifically to play Angela. Um, well, the, um, the appeal of the project really was the, the amazing script, uh, the wonderful director. Uh, you've just been speaking to S.J. Clarkson, uh, the team involved. It's a very female-heavy project, um, not only in front of the screen, but also behind the screen. Uh, behind the screen, you've got the executive producers, the uh, writer, the author of the book, Sarah Vaughan, the director, S.J. Clarkson. Um, David E. Kelly as well, of course, with uh, Undoing and Big Little Lies. But um, it's also a very important story. For me, uh, the, my character was a challenge, a big challenge, because um, she's somebody who's had to work extremely hard to get where she is. She's probably encountered people like James Whitehouse, because those kind of entitled people who feel they have privilege, they have the right to behave the way they, they feel they want to. Um, it's probably, they've come from the Eton Oxbridge background, with doors being opened, or uh, wheels being oiled, you know, they're father and their grandfather knew this person that person they just pass along nice there's people like Angela have to fight to get where they are and probably have encountered that kind of entitled um, privileged little morality kind of person and here she is in court defending one of them um, and she's brilliant at what she does and she doesn't bring that into court because that's not what QC's do but you know it's um, he doesn't have many redeeming quick uh, qualities and it's her job to get him off and what do you hope people take away from watching it? I mean, it feels sometimes we've had the kind of Me Too movement, but these stories are still being uncovered, and there's still, you know, the rabbit hole goes deeper in a way. So do you think um, series like this can prompt conversations and hopefully, you know, stop these kinds of things happening? Yes, I think that... Um, I hope that people will talk about it, because I think that um, each of the episodes uh, lead you to want to see the next one, and I think there are lots of twists and turns. It's not what you expect. I think people might find themselves having certain sensibilities of what, what they feel about James Whitehouse, what they feel about Olivia Lytton, the young woman who's brought this case. Um, they may feel at times that they know what they think about either of them, and then they may have it turned on their heads, and they have to question why they feel the way they do, what it says about them. Um, and I think it throws up a lot of topics that I think people will talk about and I hope they talk about because it's not straightforward the issue of sexual consent what is consent um, when it's not black and white um, and uh, yeah I think it's I think there are many things about this drama that will cause people to to talk about it and and between themselves discuss it and how do you see representation on screen right now both in terms of being able to tell women's stories but also for people of color um, I think it's getting better yeah, certainly in telling women's stories, I think it's getting better. I think people of colour, it's getting better. Uh, not as much as I might have thought at this time in 2022. But uh, we're going forward. We're going forward, and that's the main, that's the main thing. Fantastic. Well, lovely to chat to you. Enjoy the evening. Thank you so much.